What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to review Halo Episode 7. So, this was a mixed bag, but I will give this episode credit where credit's due, and we will get there as the episode goes on. This entire episode was solely, as actually I think I predicted to the episode number, all about Quan and then Soren, and then eventually, you know, kind of meeting together. And I, you know, I had said this, you know, when you look at episode five, six, you think, all right. Uh, I, I don't think she was in six at all. Maybe she was in one small scene. Five, she was in it a couple times, and it was just absolutely pointless. So it's been a while since we had a lot of her character. It feels like, and I've said this before, right? I don't like her character whatsoever. Now let me get to the, this episode eventually. But, uh, you know, as the episodes go on, it becomes where, all right, did you just introduce her in episode one to be this person who meets Chief? And that's kind of her only purpose for the uh, purposes, I guess, of the show, okay? So I, I knew to expect an episode where we were going to get just her, and they accomplished quite a bit in one episode. I mean, they literally killed, like, the insurrection leader. Uh, he's gone now, spoilers, <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, it's finished. It's completely done, and now she's ready to help Master Chief when he inevitably comes, and she'll kind of be the key to that, as they said. Now, I'm not a fan of her being the key to everything, and granted, she's not. She was the key to that action scene in Madrigold, and then she may be the key to Master Chief, but they haven't done anything like, you know, people will complain like bait and switches and stuff like that. I've never really had that complaint so far with this, uh, this series whatsoever. I've been more critical towards it doesn't feel like the game, what are they doing with these kind of decisions, but never like a bait and switch kind of thing that you may see other people talk about. So this episode was entirely on them, and I will say... The second half made a lot of strides to making Quan an actual character, okay? I will, like, this is the thing also with people who don't like my reviews of the show. I will give credit where credit's due. It's just they haven't deserved much, if at all, uh, over the last six episodes. But the one thing I don't like, and again, it was presented in this episode. That's why I say the second half. She continued to be this person over over their head. And now there's, a, I think there's ways of doing that where it doesn't come off so annoying. They have never been able to pull it off. Throughout this entire series, she's always been a character that's extremely cocky of herself and, and, and says she's capable of all of these things that she's never done. First, she thinks she can fight. Then she thinks she can rally troops. She literally accomplishes nothing in any of the episodes. This episode in particular was annoying. Again, first half, you really got to make the distinction it was almost night and day the quality and her character getting better from one half of the episode to the other half because the first half of the episode was character after character after character telling her that she's made it this far on her own no she hasn't this entire time she's had to be helped by other people chief Soren, literally everybody but her has accomplished everything up until this point she's accomplished nothing and here's the thing it, it's not a problem that she's accomplished nothing, and it's not a problem that she's accomplished nothing, and then she pulls off what she does at the end of the episode. I actually think that's fine. I think the end of this episode, the fighting scene, besides a couple weird editing things, and it seemed like some sloppiness with the actual martial arts, one of the times the character was trying to punch Soren, and he was clearly pulling the punch back. You could tell it was nowhere near close to him, not because he dodged it, but because he literally wasn't going for him, something maybe I, I do martial arts, so it's maybe something that I notice other people don't, but that was awful. Besides that, the action scene was good, and it's fine. I don't think there's any problem with uh, with Quan actually solving the issue. It made sense. You know, Soren handled the battle part to it, and Quan had the plan. It makes sense why she knew the plan, right? Because she's been that heir. I will give them all the credit. It wasn't a, again, it wasn't a bait and switch. It wasn't a character who is incapable of doing anything, suddenly magically able to do everything. No, she knew what she needed to do because she's been there and she knows the ins and outs of it. That makes a lot of sense. So that was all fine. I just find it odd including in this episode that they continue to rail on she's done everything to this point on her own she's so powerful she she took out a man twice her size who are they even talking are they talking about chief what are they talking about when they said that she's never taken out anybody so it's like i don't i don't know why we need to pretend that's really maybe what i'm trying to get at why have we pretended for six and a half, six and a half episodes, that she's more capable than she is. Because she's not. But, it, but that's okay. You can have the second half of this episode, and it makes sense. So, uh, it's weird. I, I mean, that's why I called this video, or the title, a mixed bag. Because I hated 
the first half besides her being obliterated by chief over and over and over that was very funny to me i had great joy in that but and for obvious reasons but besides that scene which was laughing at it the rest of the first half was awful I, I really thought it was awful again it really just cemented like you want people to like these this character in Quan because she's so good and so powerful but yet she's never done anything so when she says she does things or when other characters tell her and and what's funny is Soren points it out directly to her which means the show is aware when she uh, finds Soren in the area that the first episode took place in the right the beginning fight you know she's aiming at him and she says like well I've made it and she says it this time up until that point other characters in this episode kept telling her you've made it this far on your own not really I mean you drove there is that what you mean but besides that you've accomplished nothing so she's aiming the gun at him and she says that too oh I've made it this far uh, fine like I've made it this far quite fine and and he basically says either you're too young or too stupid to realize it but you need you know, like basically you need help and it's like yeah I mean isn't that kind of obvious so but it's like the show knows that and it, because it had a character tell her that so I don't know if it's supposed to be like a naive thing she's been naive for six and a half episodes but it's also but I don't buy that I do not buy that as an excuse because other characters have told her that too you know what I mean? Like, it's one thing if she, th and she does, it's one thing if she thinks she can fight, but then never does, and anytime she does, she loses. It's up to her, you know, if she thinks that she can rally the troops, which we've gone over, right? I think episode three, four, whichever it was, when she went to rally, she's like, well, I can be a leader. I can just gather all of these people because they like my dad, so they'll like me, and I'll just command them all. It's like, are you, have you ever done anything like that? How do you know that would work? And guess what? It doesn't work. So there is a naivety there where she believes she can do things, but then ultimately she never accomplishes them. So the whole thing is almost embarrassing to, like, think about. But then you have other characters telling her that she's so good too. So that's the part that I, that's why I don't believe it's it's her being naive. Because other it, it really is, in my opinion, the show wants you to like her. So it's telling you through her and through others how good she is. And it's simply not true. And I think everybody kind of knows that. And by the way, the reason I'm, I'm talking so much about Quan is because that was, <laughs> that was the entire episode, right? So these are all very, in my opinion, important things. But like I said, I mean, credit where credit's due fight scene was good um I, I i i like the whole cat and i've always i guess i like that kind of um whatever you want to call it like when they do that in shows or movies kind of a, almost a, a a fake like you're gonna bring them in on purpose like you're letting them come in but you have like a secondary plan like i like that that's that's cool and again i think a lot of the fighting there was good again i have no problem with what Quan did i like that she was the one to take the shot that was cool i actually you know, obviously, they probably have bigger plans for Soren, specifically because they're doing a season two, and I'm sure he'll come back and all that stuff. I, I, It felt in the moment like he should have died there, and that's kind of my initial, what I thought. I will say, I thought that in the moment, but then when he took the cash and he said, like, you know, I could give you some of this, like, you, you don't owe me this much, and then he leaves, and she's like, well, we'll see uh, each other again. And he says, like, I hope not. Like, that, that was a good scene. So... In the moment when he gets shot, uh, which looked like his neck at first, but I think it was like his shoulder. In that moment, and when he's lying there, and she's and you know she comes out, I thought he was gonna do something very sacrificial, where he, you know he was gonna do it on purpose and say, "Hey, you run in, I'm gonna take the shot, I'll die to save you." I would have bought that, and I think that would have been a good moment. But I guess I get, you know, I mean, the scene after that, I understand that they, you know, why they didn't do it, so it it was fine, but. Nick's bag, Nick's bag, and, and I, you know, with Quan, it's really now going to be how does she act in the future, because this is a good stepping stone, or a stepping point, or starting point, or whatever you want to say, but it, it's that cockiness, it's that ego that not her, or not her, like the actress, the character has, and the show has on her, so it's going to be interesting when Chief comes, which will be, you know, 8-9, uh, the next two episodes, does she act as if she's the savior? She's like, oh, well, I took down the insurrection group in Madrigal. I'm so cool. I'm so good. Hey, Chief, I know all the answers. I'll help you achieve your ultimate goal, but you'll only be able to do it because of me. See, if that happens, that's not going to make her likable. You know what I mean? And she already isn't likable. She became a little bit. This is easily the most I've ever liked her, and it's still not much, only because of that last 20 minutes. So if she continues... The ego trip, which I can't imagine the show will let her deviate from all that much, I will go back to finding it very annoying and hate her. But for now, 
fine okay for now fine so let me know what you guys think in the comments make sure you guys are subscribed bell icon turned on so you know when all these videos go up and i hope to see you guys on tomorrow's video